Welcome to Xbox Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Turbo Golf Racing for the Series X and S, the latest title to hit game preview, think here Rocket League meets golf and that about really sums it up, but is this a hole in one or more like a bogey? Well that's what we're here to find out so hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals and game pass breakdowns weekly and let's get started. First up then, as this is game preview, we do not attach a score, it's very much a work in progress. We do want to respect that, we treat these as more think performance reviews and break down whether we think it's worth jumping in yet at this point. So with that said, as I opened with, it's very much Rocket League in many of its mechanics, but with a golf spin, and I'll say it up front, I've been having a blast. It's intended as an online experience, but I was able to get my hands on it a couple of days early, where to my surprise, I actually found a single player mode baked in as well. This just gives you a chance to run through the 30 featured courses at your own pace. The gameplay concept though, head out onto an oversized golf course and knock a huge ball down to the hole. The first one there wins that round. This is not a case of eight online players, one ball battling it out, which I actually kind of expected going in, but rather you get a ball each, you can only see ghosts of your opponents. It's all one big race, you cannot interact with any of them or their ball either. Nice and simple as well and no stroke counting or anything complicated, take as many touches as you need, just get there as fast as possible. Controls then we can of course steer, accelerate, brake, handbrake and reverse. Alongside this though, and this is where the arcade element comes into play, we can jump, we can boost, we can air dash, we can glide as well thanks to some deployable wings. We can also then unlock cores, which are basically unlocked with progress. They add an active and a passive ability. A couple of early examples, you can shoot the ball straighter. You can send out a shockwave, that was my favorite. And you can increase boost speed at the cost of, you know, how much boost you have. Scattered around these tracks and you'll also find free pickups, a shield to defend yourself. You've got rockets, so you actually can impact your opponents. And then there's also going to be refills of boost. This is alongside boost pads, wind tunnels that propel the ball and car forward. And then also these floating boost circles, which typically they direct your ball perfectly at the hole. It's worth knowing there as well, you can have either a shield or a rocket, but never both at the same time. Picking them up as well, it's simple, drive over them or have your ball connect with them. It's an intuitive system, the controls overall. They've been designed to be pick up and play, but they're also difficult to master, and that's exactly how I feel here. They are absolutely responsive, but I can see here so much room for improvement in my own ability. Alongside this then as well, we have a number of elements that will impact our run at the hole as well. The sand bunkers and long grass, that's going to slow the ball and the car down. There's going to be trees and rocks that can get in your way. Maybe you're going to be flying past them and a collision really can hurt that time. There's even edges where we can go out of bounds, which results in a reset back onto the track, losing precious time. Even the angle you hit the ball matters. If you hit it on the edge, you'll be adding spin and that can be absolutely disastrous. Thankfully though, it's never too random. The ball at least has a fancy little arrow to show you the flight path at your current angle. So you can at least strategize and it's not simply about guessing. This can also be turned off in the options should you prefer to, but I really wouldn't recommend it. I also see no reason why you would want to. Modes then we get online play, which is simple to join a server and compete against seven others over three courses. There's really no options in here currently that you can change. It's one size fits all. Basically though, a point tally crowns the champion at the end of these three different courses. And should you come in first, you'll get a nice little tally with trophy on the main menu. It's somewhat similar to that, which you see in Fall Guys. And like that as well, you can spend those trophies on specific cosmetics. The courses are randomized though, there's a nice variety in here from short punchy ones to those that you think you've reached the end and it turns out there's a second level entirely that you need to fly up to. Each show has a decent spin on the mechanics the game packs, you know some want you to go fast, others they'll want you to really get a hold of that ball control and tight turns, definitely makes for some nice variety. I was surprised again as well to see single player, but it actually makes sense now I've been online. You can, you know, essentially optimize your approach for the different holes and practice those runs. You'll even get a few additional unlockables in here. There's also a few forms of unlockables on that note. You've got cogs to spend in a garage alongside 
the trophies which we've already spoke to and then finally we've also got XP which goes towards our season. That season it's a battle pass with 40 levels it will take some time to get through as well you know to gain all of the intended items you can also expect then to find daily challenges which award bonus cogs i always do enjoy a daily challenge the ability to invite friends to a lobby before joining a server together and then in the options we do see a performance mode as well as a fidelity modes I played Fidelity personally because on the Series X that resolution drop it is noticeable when you head to performance. No doubt though we are getting a frame rate bump here but I was unable to notice on my particular monitor and it didn't feel personally worth that downgrade. Issues so far, very few honestly. I did have one scenario where my ball got stuck on the edge of the hole. It should have been suckered in. I had to try and dive in but the problem here, it's basically almost like gravitational pull so the car starts floating. I did get there with a few boosts in the end and then with the courses, you know, the boost placement, the weapons, it's always identical. It's not going to be long until people memorize, you know, those perfect runs and absolutely annihilate everyone. I would like to see basically in the future some randomization in these features to keep things you know fresh even if it's just slight tweaks in their placements. The only other thing is more the skeptic in me but this is a paid release. You know yes it's budget still but I can't help but notice here it seems like it's absolutely primed to be monetized. I hope that is not the case because right now unlocks are coming through extremely fast and I'd love to see it stay that way. It's just when you look at it though, two currency types, a store that has a timer of rotating items, a season pass, but where do they go next? I'm hoping they keep it smart and don't lean into it too much, but also again, no proof of that, just call me bitter after the amount of times I've seen games head that way. Keep it to cosmetics, reward my purchase though with frequent season passes and updates for free. Maybe throw in something like, you know, a premium paid season pass if you must. It's also worth knowing then for matchmaking region you need to be set to the same one in the options if you do want to join a friends or lobby. For example, Luke is in the UK, I am in the States, so we both had to jump onto either a UK based server or a West US one. Overall though, gameplay wise, I'm excited to see where they take this next. There's a fantastic foundation in place, I'm sure they could come up with all sorts of spins on the gameplay formula outside of this one, even just allowing us to tweak some options, maybe remove the targeting gallery for example make it a little more challenging maybe no you know i guess boosts or anything else you could get really creative with just a few adjustable areas maybe as well a custom private matches because right now that is not an option releasing it on preview though seems fair to me there is more than enough here still to keep you busy Graphically then, as I said, performance and fidelity, the drop is noticeable and the footage we've shown at this far, that has been fidelity. Now I'm going to show you performance. This is a 4K video, so it should give you a good opportunity to compare. I really like the design though overall. Cars have a suitably cartoonish look. They're animated that way too. And the boosts, the weapons are particularly satisfying. With all of the customization as well, you can definitely make it feel your own. I particularly like the different balls that you can pick up as well. I thought that was a really fun spin. Menus could honestly be a little easier to navigate. There's three pages for the car, garage for what you own, store for what you want to buy, and cause for the buffers. Bring that together maybe, you know, let's streamline things a little bit visually. There's also quite a lot of similarity in relation to the world in general and sure, like it makes sense, it's golf. But this is clearly a futuristic spin on the sport, let's face it, so maybe aim for a little more variety in the skylines in the future. They're just all kind of very similar in colour palette, so I feel like the repetition, it will kick in quicker. Audio finally, it's fine, we'll keep it quick here, a suitably up-tempo soundtrack reinforces the action, electronic in focus of course, and then the cars, the boosts, the general effects like getting the ball in the hole, they absolutely deliver on their job. That's really all of that is and it is all you need. For me, this is the sort of game honestly where I turn off the music and put my own on. Overall, a turbo golf racing does exactly what the name suggests, honestly. It's a racing spin on golf with a clear love for Rocket League and it absolutely works. No doubt as well, Rocket League fans, you have a clear advantage and I suspect you'll be online no doubt crushing everyone immediately. The single winner concept though for each round, it kept me coming back over and over determined to win and I'd be lying if I didn't say, even the cosmetics had me playing a few more rounds than I may have intended. 
I played with Luke as well, and then and while you're competing against eight, it led to some great banter between the two of us, and there's some really like funny moments in here. At the current price point, though, it's just under 18 bucks, or your regional equivalent, and I think it's absolutely worth it, especially if you're a fan of Rocket League or kind of quick, punchy online games. Around here, it's going to be no longer than maybe 10 minutes at a push. Best of all though, it's day one on Game Pass. It also has a free trial, so there's really no excuse not to at least give it a go. Have you been playing this one so far? Then let us know in the comments down below. And with that, hit subscribe, but join us here for reviews, deals, and Game Pass breakdowns weekly. And I'll see you all on next video. Thanks everyone.